Hi, and thanks so much for joining me for my Sephora recommendations. If you'd like to see that, please keep watching. Welcome back and a special welcome to those of you who are first time viewers. I know this video is one of the videos that people search for, so this might be your first time here. I focus on luxury beauty and I'll be talking a lot about that during these recommendations. And I'll also be showing clips, so that's kind of a new thing I haven't done before. So I'll show cutaways of the products in action, but I will also be providing a full get ready with me as well, just explaining in a little bit more detail, but at least this way you can see the products on the face. Starting with foundations, I actually had questions about this, so I did a lot of side-by-sides for you of these products, the Merit products and the Westman Atelier products. So I applied suede on this side of my face, and with Merit, it's a nice lightweight, very easy to use product, and I love using this under the eye as well as, uh, as a foundation. So it's supposed to replace your concealer and your foundation. It does cover both of those bases, and I also love using it with their brush. So the Merit brush fits perfectly underneath the eye area, as well as sweeping out the makeup really easily. So that is a Merit. And then I also try on the Westman Atelier for you in the shade five. I think this shade's a little bit light for me, but at least you can get a sense of the texture. It's a bit more creamy and a little bit more heavy duty than the Merit. So I think you can see side by side that one has a little bit more coverage. I think the Merit has more of a natural glow to it than the Westman Atelier. Even though Westman Atelier is still natural, it's definitely a thicker consistency and doesn't have the same type of glow that the Merit does. I also think the Merit looks better under the eye than the Westman Atelier. Another foundation that I recommend is this one. I actually put it on over both of those after that. The La Mer, and I rediscovered this because I've had this for a little while and I wore it this summer and I noticed how the wear on it was really nice. And it's actually called the Soft Fluid Long Wear Foundation. And I thought, oh yeah, it does have a nice long wear quality to it. Looks really beautiful after several hours of wear. I have mine in the shade Buff 23A. So it's just almost slightly tan for me at this point. It's really great summer color for me, uh, but I sweep this all over the face. Actually, the coating on this has changed, so it's no longer buff 23. It's something else, but I will put the equivalent down below for you in case you're similar to my shade. But that is a really beautiful one. And there's another one that I actually didn't try on in the Get Ready With Me, so I don't have a cutaway of that. But I did want to mention it because it's a really beautiful natural coverage foundation that's new to me this year by Armani. It's the Armani Neo Nude. So I'd heard so many lovely things about this and it does have a very beautiful, easy to wear kind of foundation. Just looks like your skin, but better. Nice and lightweight, really comfortable on the skin. And I have mine in the shade, what is it? Shade seven. <laughs> Those would be my four foundations to consider. As for concealer, I actually use a lot of concealers outside of the Sephora offerings. I use a lot of Clay de Peau, Sizzly, Chantecaille, but there is one that I think is very, very good, especially for discoloration. So I used it today. It's a Charlotte Tilbury. I'm gonna show you mine, but it's very sad. It was very well loved, uh, but I could use a new one. Um, it's in two medium. Here is the color. You can see I've hit pan on it. It's a nice peachy shade. So if you were wanting something lightweight, I forgot how beautiful this was. It's really a nice one. I actually might pick up another one. We'll see how many things get added to the cart, but I would consider picking this one up because it does a really nice job and doesn't add texture because I have pores in the front here and I'm using a glowier powder today. I don't know if you've noticed it's not as um, matte, but it's very much a glow today, but I'm still, yeah, it's still pretty well set. I'll talk about the powder in a, in a little bit, but that just shows you how beautiful that looks. It doesn't add unwanted texture, which is really hard to find sometimes, especially when you're talking about discoloration. I also used it in the corner of my eyes here just to cancel out the darkness. So to set, I used the Gucci powder. I have mine in the shade five, right? Yeah, <laughs> mine's in the shade five, and this one does provide a glow. So I just have to be careful up here in front not to add too much because then I do have the potential to see that texture. So I just go really light in the front and it adds a really nice natural glow to the skin without looking too shiny or dewy. Uh, there's nothing sparkly in here, but it just provides the most beautiful, healthy glow. So that's a great one if you're not too oily. I think if you're really oily, this might not be the best one for you. Maybe something like the La Mer pressed powder would be better, um, but this one is really nice. Then I finished off with an hourglass finishing powder. Now this is the one in radiant light. This is actually a little bit deep for me and I have the hourglass 
palette. This one, the Universe Unlocked, I have a dedicated video to that if you wanna see that. But that also has Radiant Light in here, which I'll use when I use my sunscreen, which is too light. So that deepens it up to the right shade. And I love the blushes and the bronzer in here. So I just wanted to mention that in case you were considering it. I do a video about actually both of the palettes. I compared them side by side. And this one really is the better one for me and my needs because I'm a little bit deeper as well as don't want as much shimmer. The other one's really shimmery, so it's like a lighter, more shimmery palette compared to this one. This one's uh, got a more subtle glow. Um, so I did go in with another finishing powder, but I only have it in this. I thought I had a full size one, but I don't know where it is. So I went in with this one, Dim Light, right here in the front, just to blur a little bit more. So this one definitely doesn't have the same level of luminosity as the Radiant Light. This one's a little bit more muted, so it's great for up front in case you wanted to do a little bit of blurring but still have some of that glow without being shimmery. Then I went in with a contour stick because I was kind of on the West Mid Atelier kick and I remembered I have this great a contour stick. This is the one in truffle. So there's one in biscuit and then one in truffle. And truffle is the deeper one. So I went in with that today, layered underneath some other products I was talking about in a little bit, but that's a really nice cream contour stick in case you were looking for one. Really beautiful. Biscuit is a little bit gray on me, but this one works really beautifully with my skin tone. I like this one a lot. Then we have blushes. So there are a couple of blushes that I really like from both West Mid Atelier and Merit Beauty, so I wanted to show them both to you. So on this side, I have Cheeky, which is a beautiful pinky shade, and this one has a lovely glow to it. It's almost translucent, so very lightweight, more balmy, I'm going to say, um, but you can see how pretty it looks on the skin. It looks like it's part of my skin. It definitely does not look like it's sitting on the skin. It looks like it's just a natural flush. So Merit definitely has a very natural finish to their products. And then we've got the shade over here by Westman Atelier in Chouchette, which looks like it's going to be too light. I always think it's gonna look too light, but this um, has Chouchette, actually. Let me show you the inserts because I put, a, of course, another blush on top of everything. So the inserts show exactly how they look on the skin. So this is Chouchette, and it's a beautiful, warm, pinky peach tone on me. So lovely, and you can go in with a pop of color with something like Bichette, which is also beautiful. So these are the two together. I love these two blushes. They're amongst my favorite cream blushes. They work well on top of foundation versus say something like the Merit. I think this one works really well directly on the skin or on top of the Merit foundation. I think they work really well together, but not necessarily on a more heavy duty foundation. But I do have three of these. <laughs> um, that's how much I like them. So actually, let me swatch them for you so that you can see them all together. I can't even remember the names, but I will swatch them here for you. There's Beverly Hills, Cheeky, and something else. I'll leave it down below just so you can see them but they are all really pretty, but nice and lightweight. Again, because I had questions about the difference between these two products, I have the Merit Lip Oils, which I really like, but I tried on Pink Beat for you, and these have a very much a more oily kind of texture. Not They're not oily, but you can tell it's a lip oil, so it has that slip to it. And then I also tried on for you the Westman Atelier. It's called the Squeaky Clean Liquid Lip Balm. And this one's more like a gloss. So there's a little bit of just a slight stickiness to this that you get in a gloss that I don't get in the Merit Lip Oil. Both of them are lovely. Both are hydrating, just different. And you can see that the Westman Atelier is also more sheer. Uh, it's a different shade as well, but it's more of like a raspberry shade on me, but really pretty. Just very different products. Of course, I ended up with a different lip <laughs> in the end just to show you a lipstick as well, but those are lovely lip products if you were considering them. Then my very favorite eyebrow pencil. In fact, this is on my wish list. It is a Gucci eyebrow pencil, <laughs> which is right here. You can see how much I love this pencil. This is my second one as well, so I just carve out the eyebrows really easily, quickly with this. There's something shiny about this. So of course in the um, get ready with me, I'll talk you through a little bit more how I use this, but it's really quick and I am always happy with the results. So that's what I have on here. This is in the shade brown. Yeah, such a lovely one. And then I thought, oh, I don't have an eyebrow gel that I love by Sephora anymore, but no, I do, I forgot, I do have one. 
It's Dior Pump and Brow 002. It's a lovely, lovely eyebrow gel. I love getting the hairs to stand up a little bit so you can see them at the top. I think it looks a little bit more natural to be able to see the ends of the hairs up there. So I love that for this. This is a very nice one. Yeah, I totally forgot about it until I started to think through what I had from Sephora that I loved. And then I love Charlotte Tilbury palettes, but I wanted to pick one that was different than many of them. So I take you through this look with this palette here. It's the Rock Chick. And slight difference between the Get Ready With Me and now, I added just a little bit more of this shade, this gray shade, right above. I thought it could use a little bit more dimension, so I just went above the lash, not the lash line, the crease. So let me look down for a little bit. I kind of stopped a little bit closer to the crease, but then I decided to bring it up just a little bit further. So that's the only difference that you'll see in the Get Ready With Me, Get Ready With Me, and this one is just that I took this, again, this shade up a little bit higher. So I just think it's such a pretty one, really easy to blend, really easy to use, can be a little bit intimidating when you have a deep matte like this, but it blends really easily, just go in gently, and uh, you can see I added it to the corner there. So I do have this one on right now, but I have a Tom Ford palette that's on my wish list, so I'll talk about that in a minute. In terms of mascara, I don't currently have a mascara by Sephora or from Sephora, or that you can buy at Sephora. <laughs> I have the Chantecai one on right now, uh, the Faux Seal Longest Lash Mascara, but I really do like the Ilia one, so if you are interested in one that's gonna give you nice natural lashes, Ilia is very nice. I didn't have any issues with that when I tried it, but I'm trying to think what else would I buy? Yeah, I think it would be that one. I like the Charlotte Tilbury push-up lashes. That's nice as well for like a more um, heavy-duty kind of build the volume and length quickly. That's a nice one but I don't have a newer one of that. And those are the ones right now that I can think of. If I can think of any other ones, I'll let you know in the description box below. And then one of my favorite brands for bronzers is carried on Sephora. So I went in with this, where did it go? And here it is. So Guerlain makes some of the most beautiful bronzers I've ever used. So I went in with this one. This is the Terracotta Matte, and this was in the shade Medium, but I love the tone in here. So if you look at this, you can see there really isn't like a heavy red component. Yeah, sometimes there's just too much red or too much pink in them, but I love, love, love Guerlain bronzers. So this, again, is the matte version. So there's kale and clay in here, so if you have more oily skin, this is a good one. Um, I put on the perimeter, but then I kind of dusted it everywhere because <laughs> I used the Charlotte Tilbury brush for that as well as the big La Mer brush. I'll talk about the brushes a little bit more in depth in a moment, but I went in on the perimeter and as well as like a little bit closer just to kind of diffuse that and bring it a little bit more together so it was more cohesive so the guerlain bronzer really lovely one and then i tried to think of a blush that i really like and i think i might pick one up if i remember to pick a new one up of this one this is by charlotte tilbury and i just put it all over i took the lighter shade this time because i had the other blushes underneath but that's something i love doing is taking a powder blush and layering it over a cream blush i think that's really pretty you do get that glow underneath as well so i went in with this by charlotte tilbury but any of her blushes are beautiful i haven't had anything that i don't like by charlotte tilbury lovely blushes and then for a lip i tried to think like what are some lips that I love? I love Tom Ford lipsticks, and I love Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks, and some of the other lipsticks I love aren't carried on Sephora, so I thought I'd focus on those. So I went in with this shade by Charlotte Tilbury. It's got a little bit of like that brick red almost in there, just a touch of warmth that I think is really pretty, especially for this time of the year. So that's what I went in on um, for the lips. But again, this is like one of those things where pick a shade, you'll be happy with it because I haven't been disappointed with a formula. I also love Glowing Gem. That's one of my all time favorite shades that I think maybe I need to pick up a fresh one of that because mine's a little bit old now. So I do use that one frequently, but still one of my very, very favorite shades. Let's quickly talk about brushes. They are an investment in my eyes. If you get a good brush, it's going to pay off because it will save you in terms of makeup, especially in foundation. So sometimes brushes can absorb a lot of the foundation and it's in your brush and not on your face. But this one does such a beautiful job of not absorbing the foundation and of a beautiful, flawless, airbrushed finish. The Shiseido brush 
Now I have two of them because I use one for foundation. I use the other one for like a polishing, which is the original intent, I believe. But then if you look on their site, they also talk about using it for foundation. So you can use it for foundation and I do. Actually, I love it for foundation. It's pretty much the only brush you'll see me use. I used to use beauty blenders, that kind of thing. But I just love the way this makes a foundation even better. So it's got four petals on it. So it's almost like four brushes together, which I think is part of the magic. And plus you you can see they're all dome shaped and you get a really nice feel with a brush because of the way it's shaped where your fingers go. So it's very ergonomic in that you can hold a brush just like this and there's a place for everything and then you just apply like this. So you'll have seen me apply the foundation with this. So I have two. So this is one of the things that I think I get the most feedback about, about things that you are very happy with that you picked up. So let me know if you are one of the people who has picked this up because you've seen me use it pretty much in every video where I use foundation. This brush is amazing. Also mention to the Merit brush. I love this with the Merit products. I don't know why I just use this mainly with the Merit products, but it's the perfect kind of density for that foundation or the foundation concealer. Um, what's this called? This, <laughs> it's perfect for this. I feel like they go hand in hand in terms of the density of this brush and the density of this product. I think they're perfect together. And then I like using it on the blush as well. So I highly recommend this brush if you're going to get the Merit products. And then you saw me use this Hourglass. It's the Ambient Lighting Edit brush, which I love because it fits if you have these palettes. And I think I have every one since they came out with them, but they fit nicely in here. So you can grab this, 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 or this without mixing up any of the shades. So I think this is a great one. I use this for cream products as well. I think it's really good for that. Ambient Lighting Edit brush, two-sided. So one side is tapered here and the other one is more rounded. So that's the difference between the sides. And then we have this Charlotte Tilbury brush that I use for bronzer. I like to place the bronzer that way. It's a little bit more dense, so you can place it exactly where you want. And then I also love this giant brush. I like to use it for things that are a little bit more soft in terms of the powders. Um, if you like these Guerin Long um, meteorites, you can use something like this to pick up the powder. I think that's really pretty. Or like a softer bronzer I like to pick up with this brush. I rarely use it for powder, but I will. Sometimes there's a new powder I'm using not available on Sephora, but I use this to apply that. Really quickly, a couple of hair things. The Super Fine Hairspray is my only hairspray that I'll use. I will only use this hairspray. <laughs> I love it so much. It's a very gentle hold without being sticky. Sometimes, actually, most of the time, uh, hairsprays are too sticky for my hair. So I like this one, not sticky at all. Nice and lightweight, doesn't weigh it down. My hair is heavy, so anything like just a little bit will weigh it down. So I need it to be as light as possible. I also wanted to talk about the uh, Dyson hair dryer. <laughs> as you know, if you've been here before, I've used, I actually have a vlog that shows how I use it, but I think it really makes my hair nice and silky and just, it feels really soft when I use it and it has technology in there so it doesn't damage your hair because I was always worried about the heat damaging my hair. So I really like that it brings out that shine in my hair. It makes a big difference. Onto my wish list. So I have a few things written down here. I have the Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage Correct and Brighten Concealer Duo Stick. I was trying to think of other concealers that I really love that are from Sephora and that's when I realized I need to try this out because I saw it go by. I wanted to pick it up, got confused about the shade, totally forgot about it and never picked it up. <laughs> so I'd love to pick that up to see how that goes. So if you are my shade and you have darker spots that you cover up, I need a little bit of a color correcting kind of power to it. So something peach toned, let me know what you picked. And then I would love to revisit the YSL Touche Club. I think that might be a nice brightening concealer or brightening product for right here. Kind of like what I do with the La Prairie or the Chantecai, um, Le, uh, not Le Mans Stilo, like Camouflage Stilo, because I do that with that product right there. So I want to pick that up. The Tom Ford bronzer looks really beautiful. I have not tried it. So if you have it, let me know. Should I pick it up? I'd love to try it out though. It looks so pretty. I've always looked at it, but I never picked it up. Um, as I said, the Orbe Super Fine Hairspray, definitely picking that up. I can tell this is almost empty. Oh yes, I need to pick up the Grande Brow Enhancing Serum. So I use that every night, the Brow Enhancing Serum, because my eyebrows have grown in so nicely ever since I started using that. Let me pick up two, because I think it's like a four month. It's worth four months. 
or last four months, something like that. And I can't remember the last time I bought it, but I'm definitely gonna use that up all the way. So I'm going to purchase probably two of those. Then we've got the Gucci powder eyebrow pencil again. I mentioned I'm gonna pick this up because I need another one and I know I'm gonna use it. So definitely getting that. And then I was looking at the Tom Ford palette, the metallic denim, which I missed on the first pass and then it came back and then I got distracted with some other things, but I really wanna pick that one up because it looks really pretty, but maybe I need to read some reviews on that. Let me know if you have it, should I get it? Really curious. And then the Peter Thomas Roth anti-aging cleanser, you know I go through that time and time again. So I'm definitely picking that up on the promo. I forgot to mention, all of the details for the sale are below in case you're interested. I don't think I said that at the beginning, but all the details of who can shop when and what the discounts are are listed below. And I don't say them here because I'm afraid I'm gonna get them wrong. <laughs> so at least in the description box, I can correct them if they're not accurate. So um, for the most accurate information, make sure you see the description box below. If I forgot something, I will include it here because there are chances are that I forgot something because I always do um, or I will list it down below and just indicate like some other things you might consider if I forgot them. <laughs> but those are tried and true products that I've used many of them over and over and over again have been repurchases. Those are things I feel really confident about recommending. So if you're interested in any of those, I've had a lot of luck with them. But I'd love to know what your recommendations are. What are things that you are repurchasing because you love them so much or things we should know about and what is on your wish list? Because I'd love to know what else is on your wish list. And let me know what I need to add to mine. Because as you know, I do purchase several things based on your recommendations or what you want to see. So I'd love to know what those things are. Oh yes, and remember, if you want to see all of that makeup in action in a little bit more detail, I will be posting the Get Ready With Me so I can talk you through all of the products and some of the application techniques that help me use these products. But that is it for today's video. So please take care of each other, stay well. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time.